Hey everyone, welcome to Weekend Project. I'm Laura Lynn of the Mama Pop Quilt Shop and we're very happy to see you here today. Today we're going to work on a little bed pocket. It's a pocket that goes beside your bed where you can put your remote, your water, flashlight, glasses. If your bedside table gets too full or you don't have a bedside table, this kind of subs as one. It's also great for kids to store their books, a couple of favorite toys or something like that uh, for them to read or your, your reading book to them uh, on reading night. Uh, so what I have here is just a about a yard of material. This is not, this is only 20 inches, but you're, you're going to want about a yard. Uh, and I have some lovely fabric here here that is actually um, printed this way. So you could cut it in half and you got this lovely scenic view or anything like that. You can do lots and lots with this. So what I thought I'd do is try and change it into a, um, like a little pouch, a little pocket, okay? So what you wanna do, cause I, I it seems like a good, uh, is about 20 inches. And then for the pocket, you're gonna need nine inches. And then for the main part, you're gonna need about 15 inches. So you're gonna need two pieces for the back and two pieces for the pocket. Whether you choose to use a different colored fabric for the back of the pocket, like I was doing here, was just a plain white, uh, just to keep kind of with the theme. So when I cut it, I wanted to be able to be, um, kind of stack the scenery if you if you want to put it that way so uh, when I go and I'm going to cut my pocket front because the front is going you're going to see that first I want to cut that at nine inches so let's go and do that right now lay this out on some straight lines here straight as they can be all right so we know this is a six inch ruler here the width wise so we can move it up three more one two three so that gives me nine we could always double check just in case our math is wrong, it's been that way before. <laughs> and then just cut straight across. Okay, so that's gonna be our front pocket. I think I need me a new cutter. Come on. I just didn't push hard enough, okay. So that would be my front pocket. And then of course I want it to match where the back of it is gonna go. Whoops. <laughs> okay. Now you're going to want it so when you lay it out that when you cut this background piece, you know you need to cut it at 15 inches by 20. This will lay on top of it and will still create a sort of like little scenic view okay, from the top to the bottom. Hopefully that will be okay. So now let's cut this one at the 15 that we need. Okay. We don't want the salvage on so we can chop that off save it for something or give it away. Your fabric, you do what you like with it. Okay, we'll just cut that off, much better. And then up 15. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Okay. And then we're gonna want another 20 by 15 for the back of this, which we could just use this right here. Okay. Grab another 15 out of this. Make sure we're the same. Just lay it right on top to be sure. Yes, it is. Better safe than sorry. Okay, we can save that off to the side. So this will be our back to our pocket. Or I guess our the back, well, yeah, I guess. <laughs> and you wanna put those uh, wrong sides together. Okay, same with the front here. We're going to put the wrong sides together. So you see how there's a little seam in there? We're going to put it right on here. Okay. And then what we're going to do from this point here is we're going to take a little double biased tape, or you can make your own with whatever stuff you have going on. I happen to have two here. 
And then you're just going to run a strip right across the top here and then you're going to stitch that down and then you're going to run a strip all the way around here on that one. So let's just tuck this off to the side right now, show you what I got going on right here. So it's really just two, two background pieces, two pocket pieces, and then you have this, it's like a non-slip rubbery mat, and that is what actually gets stuffed underneath the mattress where the uh, pocket is gonna be, and that just keeps it, keeps it steady, isn't that neat? And you can get that at the dollar store. It's uh, great for drawer liners. It's great for uh, where your glasses go on the shelf so they're not clanging. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's relatively inexpensive. You could, uh, I think there's some that even um, you can put in the bottom of your sink to prevent damage to your sink and stuff like that when you're doing dishes. So we want to pin our binding at the top, just like that, just between. And we're just going to sew straight down. That's this is the pocket part first, the top of the pocket. Okay. Make sure to take our pins out as we go. And what I did is I squished, I squished that fabric right up in there on that where it hits the fold. And then you can do a lovely decorative stitch on this part here, especially if you're doing it for kids. I'm sure the crazier the colors, the better. That's for sure. And now you kind of need to think at this point in time, how many pockets do you want? It's completely up to you. If you need a bigger pocket, because you put that's where you put your tablet or your your laptop, or you you know you're always having a big notebook or something like that, you can make it make it the pockets to adjust. You can have a smaller one for if it's a water bottle or a flashlight, whatever. straight on down and then once we pin these two together okay our back and our front okay. and then you're just gonna do like a stay stitch or just a um, I'd say would do within I'd say less than a quarter of an inch go all the way around to put it all together those four pieces, okay. Okay, up the top here, the bottom, and then we'll just do all the way around. We're trying to try and hug the uh, the edge of the fabric as much as we can. Right. Like I said, you can put three pockets in, put one pocket in, I mean two pockets in, you can even just put one big pocket. If you like it just so it kind of hangs out, you, so you can easy to reach things. You can make it a little taller, make it a little shorter, you know, adapt it to what you need uh, for, for the bed. Okay, so put down and just hugging, I'm going try, trying to go less than a quarter inch. And sometimes it's, you know, when we're so trained, we're so trained to go quarter inch or or even five eighths when it comes to things. So just trying to go just on the shy side of it. Go all the way around, give it a nice stitch together. And you can always trim it up. If it's not exactly 20 by nine and 15, then don't worry about it. It's not a big deal. Just, just have some fun with it. Be creative with your fabric. If you got a panel you didn't know what to do with, now maybe you can chop that up into a panel, like chop, chop the panel up. Make a nice little book pocket or bed pocket. Pivot. You could also round these corners by putting in like, or just you could use, I'm just gonna use my elastic here as, as an example, but you put it in where it becomes for the, within the seam allowances and just use that as a curve if you want to make a nice curved pocket. You know, don't want anything get lost down in those little corners or anything like that. Straighten that up a bit. Super, super great idea to 
to make gifts for people, you're not quite sure what to make. Everybody usually reads, especially kids now. Kids should be reading. And not just on tablets and stuff like that. They need to actually read physical books. Hold the paper in their hand. Okay, there we go. So once you get all the way around, now you have to determine what size you want your pockets, okay? And you're gonna take your bias tape and you're gonna spread it where you want it. And you can kind of just tuck this under. Probably could have done it beforehand, stuck it under there. Okay. Tuck those raw edges under and then just make your, your size pocket that you're looking for, whether it be big or small or you know three pockets, two pockets, whatever you like. I think we'll go with two. Line it up right down the center and just gonna stitch down on either side of that, okay? Now you don't have to put this in there. This is just a visual divider. You could even just take this out and just stitch. I mean, that is that is completely up to you. Okay. I kind of like it with that little pop of yellow, so. Try to get that in there. Down straight. Here. Okay, we'll trim this off. And we'll sew that down. And again, you can do a nice decorative stitch here. Whatever you like that gets the job done and makes you happy with your project. Okay. Now we're gonna switch it around, do the other way. Not the straightest line in the whole wide world, but as Pop would say, we're not building the piano. So. <laughs> okay, there we go. Just like that. And then you'll take your binding or bias tape and go all the way around the whole the whole edge okay all the way around the whole whole part and then when it comes to this part here where you got to have to attach you're going to want to overlap it about uh, half an inch inch or something like that to make sure you have the 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 stick, the sorry, the um, non-sticky backing or the non-movable backing, about an inch to a half an inch uh, overlapping here. Okay, and then you're going to want to sew that down. Now that's probably going to be a little tricksy. Let's do some pinning first here. Right. And of course we could do a top stitch on that or a stay stitch and keep it all into place. And then it said to, well, I was reading a pattern, not it said, but reading a pattern. And uh, they were talking about when you're covering raw edges between different materials, you'll probably want to use your bias tape to do that too and seal it all up. Okay. And that makes it nice and pretty, right? And then you're sealing up uh, the raw edges. Okay. I think that will look lovely once we get this stitch there. So be patient because it is rubber and we're going to have to sew through it. So I'm just not, I'm just skipping a step here about putting the, the binding or biased all the way around. That's all. Just so I can show you what it's going to look like. It should feed. Yeah, it should feed just fine. Just be careful that it's rubber. You don't want to you know, have your needle down or in your foot up or something like that and then yank on it, you might rip it. And let's just move some of there, there we go, that's a bit better. Help fold the bulk. Now I thought this would make great gifts for kids. Uh, you could have it so it's uh, on the couch or, or the chair. You can make a different one for the armchair, you know, a different one for the couch. 
have one for uh, something of adaptable for the car. Obviously, maybe not with the slippery stuff, but the non-slippy stuff. Like I say, you can easily find that at the dollar store for a couple of bucks for a, a fair decent roll. Probably could do one or two projects with it, depending on what size you get. Okay. Oops. All right. And then once you're done, oh, it's because I thought I sewed it on the wrong end. <laughs> that would just be me. <laughs> that would just be me. This gets tucked up underneath the mattress, like if it was this way, and then the mattress sticking down on top and the weight on top of this uh, non-sticky stuff holds the whole pocket into place. So you can put all your little goodies in here, your, your snacks, your popcorn, your chocolate, your bottle of wine. <laughs> whatever you like. <laughs> so that is weekend project. I'm just going to finish this off and then I'll take a photo for the th uh, thumbnail. <coughs> and uh, that's it. It's super easy. And hopefully you use a strip of fabric you didn't know quite know what to do with and you didn't maybe want to cut it up too much. You made a nice little bed pocket out of it. Okay. So thank you everybody for watching, liking, and subscribing. We greatly appreciate you here at the Mom and Pop Quilt Shop. We hope you have a fantastic weekend and we'll see you very soon. And don't forget to join us tomorrow, Saturday at 1 p.m. where we're going to continue working on the Crooked Courthouse steps and we'll finish that off and it will be a quilt, that, a quilt top that we're going to give away on our next 12 hour stream. So watch for when that's going to happen. You just never know. So click the subscribe button, click the notification button, and don't forget to give us a good old thumbs up. Thank you everybody. Take care and enjoy the day.